Welcome back to Digger Detecting everybody. Welcome also to a tiny little playground attached to a tiny little school. And uh, look, this is one site that we've been detecting at for quite a few years now, and we've got permission to do so. So it is a Sunday afternoon, a lazy Sunday afternoon. We've got the Equinox 900 there attached with the 11 inch coil. And look, my back is hurting a little bit. I was not gonna get out and shoot a video today. However, I just wanted to get out and do a bit of detecting and basically clear my head, get a bit of peace of mind. And uh, look, just, just due to recent events, which uh, I'll explain a little bit later and touch on, it's gonna be a hard video uh, to shoot and share and obviously touch on that subject however I think it's important and uh, as many will know I wear my heart on my sleeve uh, so look I think it's important uh, to touch on it and tell a story because it'll help me too so 1915 come full penny that guy with a hole punched straight through the middle exactly how I'm feeling right now hole straight uh, punched through the middle so not to worry let's keep going as I said out here to enjoy a bit of detecting it does not matter what we find it just matters about the peace of mind that we'll get let's keep going all right well, we've got another good signal here in the wood chips and out in the sun so we're lacking in shade now aren't we let's just clear that ground a little bit more because um oh these targets are extremely deep just good uh, just due to the build-up of wood chips so there we go 55, 60, 59, a few different numbers. Let's give you a bit of a look too. See this uh, cover that I'm sporting on the Equinox 900? That is from Detect Dead Products. So check it out. Uh, really, really cool. And uh, whoop, let me turn you around and give you a look at the back. Basically, new cover for the Equinox series and the Xterra, a Mine Lab series there. And uh, look, I just think they, uh, well, they're pretty. They're the bee's knees, I think. So I'm gonna give it a bit of a test out in future. See what I think of it. So far, I really like it. I think it jazzes it up a bit nice and a bit nicer. And the buttons all fall in line with all the little pictures. You know, you don't don't struggle. You don't uh, hit a button and you think, oh, it didn't didn't work. It all falls in line perfectly. So very impressed. It's been a few covers that I've seen in the past too. That I like, I've just never ever tested them out, but that uh, that one from Detect Ed Products, tell you what, I really, really like it. I have to get another one and put on the 800. Right, we should be down deep enough to hit on with a pinpointer. And hopefully see what he is. So it's not about what we find today. It's just about having a bit of fun. We were, we were pretty much right on him, weren't we? What is that? It's horribly corroded, whatever it is. I don't think it's going to be a coin. Oh, we're back off the sidewall here. So, there we go. Bit of rubbish. Not sure what it is. It's not a coin though, so we'll bag him. We'll keep going. And look, while I keep going, as I said, we will touch on a little bit what's going on. It's, uh, look, it's nothing I won't get over. It uh, happens to the best of us, all of us. It's just a bit upsetting. Life, um, life's not fair sometimes. Let's keep going. So we're going down to another target, which the one that we just uh, were going down to was pretty much right behind me. This sounds a little bit better. So hopefully this is actually a coin while we go down just start sharing the best I can. A uh, little bit of, look, I don't even have to do this either. Uh, it's just, you know, I, I wear my heart on my sleeve and I think talking about it's good. And not only that, if I can get a message out uh, to help others, or you know, maybe uh, relate with others, that's what I'm all about. I try and help others out there. So, recently I've been struggling a lot with my back. And I mean, my back pain, something I've dealt with since I was you know early teens late teens and that's all right I've been struggling with me back that's okay whatever learned to deal, uh, deal with the pain over the years there's not really much I can take for it because of my heart because if I take any anti-inflammatories it will affect my heart so it's catch-22 so it's uh, living in pain sometimes another bit of scrap but that's all right, I've learned to deal with it. I'm 36, I've learned to deal with it over the years. 
last few nights though, I've been up in pain because of work, because I end up carting buddy two and a half tonne of freight every day, hand unloading, hand, hand load and load and deliver. You know, been nothing for me to do two or three tonne of freight every day, especially now Christmas. Up late at night though, not getting much sleep, in pain, living in pain. <laughs> Last night, oh, I got a bad habit of falling asleep on the couch. Last night I um, woke up about two o'clock in the morning. And uh, basically, woke up to a message. G'day Luke, such and such and such, blah, blah. At the end, uh, by the way, uh, I hope, um, well, I hate to say it, but um, did you know Leon had passed away? Which, at 2 a.m., there's a spoon. 2, 2 a.m., you know, you're sort of waking up off the couch in pain, still in pain. I had to read it twice, and, and then my mind went into overdrive, you know. When did this happen? How did this happen? I knew he was not well. He was only a year older than me. It's his, actually, it's his birthday tomorrow. He'd be 38. Would have been 38. Don't know what that is, but let's dig it. So Leon would have been 38 tomorrow. And I've known Leon for coming on well, nearly 20 years. I was sort of working out there the other night. 18, 19 years I think it's been. And I first met him sort of around other friends, through other groups of friends, and parties and whatnot. He's a very quiet guy, Leon. Very quiet. And the reason being is because he had disability issues. And he would struggle to put himself out there because a lot of time he kept picked on. Really badly picked on. I've seen it a lot. People trying to big note themselves or think they're tough because they can pick on someone. They can't, pro can't properly stand up for themselves. Some with a disability. Or someone's a little bit timid or shy. That was Leon. Bit of rubbish. A little pull tab actually. Alright. We might get out of the bark chips. We're just digging rubbish now, aren't we? So that was Leon. Bit bit quiet, bit timid, a bit shy. Disabilities, you can see why. He dealt with it his whole life. Sounds good. So I met Leon nearly 20 years ago. And uh, I said a lot of people used to pick on him. I've become mates with him. And funnily enough, actually, one point, or how I really become good mates with him, I live right across the road from him. So he lived, whoa, that exploded. He lived in a house literally across the road. So we'd, uh, we'd see each other most days. He'd come over for a drink. I lived with a, uh, another mate. And Leon lived across the road with another few people. Dollar. Yes. Goldie, we're getting rich. Awesome. Throw it in the pouch. Maybe the bark chips is the place to be. Let's hover around here a little bit longer. So, got mates with Leon over the years. And then, look, you know, I'm not going to drab on forever about this. But we used to do a lot of stuff together, Leon and I. We used to go fishing and camping full driving and uh, look he used to help me work on my cars he used to help me mechanic in the shed all the time at home great mate always up for just always up for something all right let's go out in this back paddock i reckon i'm still getting distracted 
this uh, this bark chip so has built up so much so yeah look let's do it let's get in the back paddock so look become really good friends with Leon and we did a lot over the years a lot and at one point he uh, he actually lived with me uh, for probably nearly two years and I looked after him because well there wasn't many people in Leon's life that did and I'm not trying to be look rude to him but he, he sort of needed it he needed looking after he needed help he needed people who weren't going to take advantage or pick on him Leon's disabilities he wasn't born with them either there was something that come through I'm not going to go into it but family dysfunction basically he was not treated like he should have been when he was a child therefore creating permanent brain damage So, Leon always had learning difficulties, reading, writing difficulties. He had um, yeah, even a slower speech. People picked on him for that. People seen that, yeah, oh, this guy's weak or whatever, and they picked on him for it. To the point of, you know, <laughs> he would get paid People would borrow money off him. Hey, Leon, oh, borrow a bit of money off you. I'll pay you back next week. They'd never pay him back because they'd know that 20 cent are. They'd know that it was Leon. What, what's Leon going to do? The thing is, though, Leon was still a person. He worked for that money. He earned that money. It's If he's kind enough to borrow it out, he should buddy pay it back. People didn't do that, though. They took advantage of Leon. So when Leon lived with me, none of that ever happened. Ever. Because I wouldn't allow it. I'm not trying to sound like a tough guy or a hero or anything like that. He was just treating Leon fairly and how he should have been treated as a person, like anybody. Long story short, Leon got out of the local town because, well, I'll go back a bit there. It's probably going to be a pool tab. We're going to dig it anyway. When I split up with my previous girlfriend, who was living with Leon and myself at the time, obviously, oh, that was a messy plug. Obviously the house was, you know, we all got out of the house. It's rental, we're all living there. Foundation was my, me and my partner. When we broke up, we both split up. The house was, you know, uh, vacant. Leon had to find somewhere to go and I tried to help him out the best I could. And uh, look, I could barely find somewhere to go myself, let alone another person with a dog. It's very, very hard. I had to get my life back on track at the same time too. So Leon kicked around town for quite a while, living with different people, once again taken, getting taken advantage of. And I lost contact with Leon quite a bit. And then he moved away. And it was probably the best thing he ever did, was moving away. Because where he moved to was a bigger city. And he got a lot of help that he needed. And he ended up living with people that didn't take advantage of, of him anymore. Which is exactly what he needed. The last time I spoke to Leon, and he'd been living up, you know, in this bigger place for, for years, for probably 10 years, I think. And I had not seen him properly. A couple of times, but I had not caught up with him regularly. 
like I should have. A bit easier for me because I had a license car. Leon didn't. Leon couldn't have a license, or he, he didn't think he ever could. Later on is when he got a license and ended up saving up a bit of money and buying himself a ute. And he loved it, absolutely loved it. Best thing he ever did, because it gave him his independence. Let's chase a few high signals if we can find them. Back in about August this year, Leon Sounds too good, we're gonna grab that one. About August this year, Leon contacted me and uh, mentioned that he was not well. Uh, he had been diagnosed with brain cancer, brain tumour, inoperable, of course. Else, and I said last night I woke up to a message saying, Oh, these flies are crazy. That's not what the message said, saying that Leon had passed. And he passed away. 10 days after my birthday, back in October. And I said, tomorrow's his birthday. He would have been 38. I didn't want to shoot a video and be all somber and heartfelt. But at the same time, I was sort of raised to talk about things I can hear a lot of rust in that hole get things out, talk about things because it's healthy and natural and even though I bottle a lot up I think it's also good to get a bit out So, today, that wind is crazy. Today while I'm detecting, I'm just sort of going to do it in memory of Leon. Just have a bit of fun, enjoy myself, whatever comes out, it's going to be in memory of Leon. So, good mate, one that I should have... Um, should have caught up with a little bit more I had the effort to and in hindsight it's okay to say I really should have anyway let's keep going let's find the high signal because that's going to put me on a high and let's uh, see if we can get out a silver Alrighty, so here it is. That's the high signal we've been chasing to try and get us back on a bit of a high. We have not dug anything decent since that, uh, well, the half penny a dollar coin and a 20 cent coin. That's about the best of it. So, let's see what we've got. Surprisingly enough, the ground is pretty. It's very dry. But it's not that hard to dig in. Although I can't dig a neat plug to save myself at the moment. That's alright. I said today's just about getting out and having a bit of fun. It's not about what I find, it's just about, uh, well, in memory of a mate. And uh, look, clear in the head, I gotta get back to work tomorrow. Last thing I wanna do is go back to work, be in the truck all day, thinking I should have got out for a detect and, you know, help me peace of mind a bit. Because it really does, metal detecting really does. I don't have to tell anybody that watching, because, uh, well, you know. Even when you're finding rubbish. Oh dear. Look at that. Bottle. Uh, well, not a bottle top. A bit of scrap can. So not to worry. 
did sound good though, didn't it? Just like a silver should. Let's keep going. There it is. Listen to that guy. Ho, ho, ho. That's getting me excited. Getting me on a high. I tell you, I love those high signals. Because they generally mean silver or... Let's just pinpoint a bit better. Silver or copper. It's bound to be a coin anyway, whatever it is. Let's give it a dig. Oh, the ground's nice and soft too. Nice and dry. Whatever it is, it's going to be in good condition. Let's hope it's a florin. Because, uh, I'll tell you what, I need a few more to catch up with Darren. I think he's up to about 20 now. I'm only on 16, so he's definitely bet me this year. We don't have enough time left in the year to get any more. I'm probably running out of spots to dig to get any more. Not really. Oh, that is a coin. Look at that. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. What did I tell you about this back paddock? It's held the goods. Oh, it's definitely held the goods. That was two in one. You seen that happen? Oh my God. Just had to make sure the record button was hit then. There we go. Leon, that one's on you, mate. Bloody hell. I said, Leon always wanted to come out hunting with me. There we go, two mates in a hole. That is awesome. 1918, I don't know what this guy is. You heard that sing up too, that was a super mighty loud signal. And look, we've got the 11 inch on today, and nothing's very deep here, but uh, how awesome would it be to bring the 18 inch back here, because it is quite a large space, and cover the whole thing, the whole ground, and get more of these guys out. So, let's give this one a wipe. Let's have a bit of a look ski. Oh, that's cracker. Well, there's our florin straight away because, uh, well, one shilling equals 12 pence. And one florin equals 24 pence. So two shillings is a florin or the value of. So what do we got? 19. Oh, he's a hard one. 191. Something. Flies are crawling all over my face. Let's give him one more wipe. That is just, ah, oh, look, that's magnificent. As I said, it did not matter. What come out today, I've been digging a lot of pool tabs, a bit of rubbish, have a look. This was, this was just getting out for my own peace of mind. And uh, look, a little bit in memory of Leon, in memory of a mate, good mate. 1917 and a 1918. Well, there you go, Leon. You're a little bit older than me, mate. So you're the 1918. I'm the dirty old 1917. So awesome stuff. Both King George on the back, a ripper find, two early shillings in the one hole it doesn't get much better than that all right we've filled our shilling hole in how magnificent was that that was just i'll tell you what that made my day that made my afternoon you want to see something else cool though look at that guy 66 67 three bars of depth that's going to be a sixpence that's going to be our third silver coin we've only got a dollar 20 so far plus two two cent coins and an old penny with a hole in it, don't we? So I'll tell you what, for coming out uh, just to enjoy, just to relax, a bit of peace of mind, we are certainly doing a lot better. So, and look, uh, I didn't mean to drop all that at the start of the video. As, uh, as a lot will know though, I do wear my heart on my sleeve and I don't mind sharing what's going on. And uh, let's face it, we're sort of documenting, well, not documenting, but uh, all the videos that I do, you know, I, I share a lot of stories and uh, you know, you all sort of came, uh, keep up with what's going on in my life. So, and I like to share it uh, like that, and I like to do that. So, let's give you a look at what we've got. We've got it out already. What are we doing? Oh, no. No, no, no. That's the size of a one cent coin buster. So, there we go. We were tricked, but that's okay because we can't be greedy out of that hole, as you've seen. We got two early type shillings, and I tell you what, I'd take that any day of the week. I just found this little piece here, and uh, look, I thought it to be nothing at first. I thought it maybe just to be, uh, look, the end of an, uh, a pencil, where the pencil joins to the rubber, being a school, but it's not. I'll show you what it is once I clean it up. As soon as I seen the little hallmark, and being that it's silver, I knew exactly what it is, was, is, Check it out, it's even got the uh, the wood still inside. See how good a job I can do zooming. So set a wood inside there. And now let's spin him around. RD, he'll have a little lion. And he'll have another 
little mark looks like Alan Co or something there but what that is that's a little stem oh, once he focuses there that's a little stem off an old tobacco pipe so I'll throw a picture up top left corner it's not the exact picture to this little uh, collar obviously but there's a little silver collar off the stem of a tobacco pipe and you'll be able to see it there clearly in the picture so a very cool piece Pinpoint is telling us to move on, hurry up, get to the next target. We'll just turn him off there. But yeah, look, those little um, little hallmarks tell the story, and I've found a few of them in the past before. So someone was smoking out on the back oval here. One of the kids had a tobacco pipe. He was puffing away with his mates out on the back oval here. Now let's get over. As we get over to, I'll show you that uh, the cricket pitch I was talking about before. Well, what I always say, the darndest of things happened when you don't have the camera running. And we just got a solid 67 on the Equinox 900 there. And to be honest, I thought, oh, I'm about to score another $1 gold coin here. He was only a surface target too, one bar of depth. So the reason why, oh my God, the reason why I did not put the, uh, put the film on, put the camera on, hit the record button. That's what I meant to say. Look at this though. We've got a pendant. As soon as I pulled him out of the hole, I was like, oh, why didn't I hit the record? Let's have a look what he is. Oh, it's nothing special. I was uh, waiting to wipe the dirt away. See like a magic reveal. But there we go. He may have been a little uh, enamel pendant. Something, something, Miller, Melbourne. I think I can see. Well, maybe I was jinxed a bit there too. No, Sydney. G.A. Miller, Sydney. Can you read that down the bottom? G.A. Miller, Sydney. I'm sure that's what it says. But nothing on the front. Oh dear. Got excited for nothing. Let's get you on to the next. Well, to tell you the truth, I've been walking around for the last 15 minutes in a bit of a mindless blur. I'm just in uh, pull tabs and uh, look, chasing a lot of low signals because in this paddock, as you've seen so far, there is not that many high signals. They're very far and few between. When you do hit on something though, generally is something good all those low signals seem to just be 20 cent coins and pull tabs though but there is our next one look at that so we've just uh, hit a high signal we threw the camera on i was hoping for another silver but it's not it's a penny and that's okay that's a half penny and it's a commonwealth i thought it was going to be a roux so there we go we've got a full penny half penny two um two shillings and we need a thrip a six and a florin don't we we can't be greedy though and let's face it, as said, it's not about that today. It's just about having some fun, getting outside and enjoying. Just um, just easing the mind a bit. 19, something 8. 18? 28. I don't know. But look, we'll, uh, we'll clean him up at the end of the day and uh, try and ID him for future. So, nice target, nice signal. I think I've got another one in front of me. Look out, we've found the hot spot. We've got another target there. And I'll just step back. We've got a 38.40 there, so it's probably going to be a 20 cent coin or a bottle top. Hear that beside it though? Something higher. The only problem being is, uh, well, we've got little skipjacks, jumping jacks. We've got a nest of them right there. So, don't know if we'll go disturbing that one right now. We might leave him. Because we really need to clear the 38 on top there before we can get the one at the back here. Because otherwise I'll be digging all over the place. And I won't probably be able to locate it. Go after the easiest first. So look, let's just do this one today. We're 10 degrees northwest of the uh, top portion of the cricket pitch. I don't know. So we'll just remember that spot there for next time. When we have a batch of rain, those jumping jacks should go away. And we can get in there. Yes, another one. We can get in there and we'll dig out that next target. So I just have to be careful they don't come running over here and bite me while we're sitting down. So another con penny. Very, very early coins coming from this site. The reason why I've been digging some of those lower numbers too. Because if, uh, look, if there's a lot of early coins coming from here, uh, that being, you know, two shillings stuck in one hole, 1917, 1918, uh, plus all the, uh, well, early fourpence I dug from here. I've got two fourpences now, little groats. And uh, one's 35, one's 36. I can't remember which one come from here. I think it was the 36. Uh, but if uh, all if we're having all these early coins that come from this site, well, some of those low numbers, deep, 
deep, low numbers, that could mean gold sovereign. So we are trying to dig them. We are trying to concentrate on them. So there is the cricket pitch, end of the cricket pitch. As I said, 10 degrees uh, northwest. Probably about right. So anyway, let's keep going. Let's see if we uh, can continue in this little hot spot, find a few more. Well, we're not quite in the hot spot for this one. We have walked off a little bit there. Can you hear that though? What a sound. What a target. Hopefully it's a coin. It's hard to get uh, the coil in past all this stubble here. But I believe he's there. So let's go after him. It's going to be a penny, I dare say. Sound, uh, sounding up quite large, like a large target, large coin. And it's going to be a coin too, I dare say. Won't be a bit of rubbish. We're right on him. X marks the spot perfectly. Let's have a look. There he is. He just rolled out. And there he is again. Another full penny. It's going to be an early one. What am I seeing? I'm just looking. I've, I've dug thousands of pennies. But why does this one look different? Why is it different? What is that? Oh, that's a franc. That's a coin from France. What's it doing over here? I was going to say, that just does not look right. You look at the other pennies, if I can even get one out of the pouch. Oh, that was easy. It's the same size too. Or thereabouts. Slightly smaller. So we've got an old copper franc. Hey Frank, he's got an eagle on him though. I'm sure it says, yeah it is, it's France coin. French coin. I was gonna say it's gonna be in the 1800s and look at that, 1862 maybe, down the bottom. Let's give him one more clean. These flies are relentless too and I still haven't bought a hairnet. Shocking, 1860 something. Two, eight, I don't know. Wow, Napoleon. I can see Napoleon written there. Wow, did we just find a really cool cool coin? I think we did. Look at that, eh? I found a German coin not too far away from here on an old farm. And that sort of blew me mind. 1863, 1865. I'll throw a picture up top left corner. Really, really cool old coin. A German coin. Very awesome. There we go. I've never ever found one of those. 1862 or 8 franc with the Napoleon on it. It looks like a penny. Acts like a penny, but it's not a penny at all. So, awesome. Wow. This oval is on fire. Let's keep cracking along and see if we can't snag a big boy florin. Alright, well we are moving closer towards the end of this video. I, uh, I'm feeling it in myself. I, uh, I'm getting hungry, I'm getting thirsty. It's quite hot out here in the sun too. And it's a Sunday afternoon. Better not push myself too hard. No doubt I've got another two tonne of freight to shift tomorrow. Oh dear, work is flat out at the moment. Just silly. Silly season. And it does not end. Uh, you know, once Christmas is over, it does not end straight away for us. It, uh, it actually continues on for another month or two, right through to about February, and then we start slowing down. So, have all the back orders, and we have all the uh, the Black Friday sales and the Boxing Day sales. Everybody ordering up, and uh, still with Christmas presents and whatnot coming through late, They're needing to be delivered. So. Be nice to be out of the freight game one day, I tell ya. Stop, uh, stop lugging all that freight. What do we got? It's a something. It's a fancy. Is that gold? Do we just find gold? Looks like it. What was it attached to? Nothing, I don't think. What did we just find? Is that a hair clip? Let's bend him out. Looks like gold, doesn't it? Let's have a look. 
Oh, I don't think so. Look at it flaking off in the corner there where we bent it. And that, I dare say, is a hair clip. With a little flutterfly in the middle. Looks old. Maybe there's a marking in there somewhere. We're going to ID when we get home. Looks like rose gold, doesn't it? Very shiny, very sparkly, very cool. Let's keep going, see if we can bag one more coin before we get out of here today. Alrighty guys, so this is going to finish us up. This is going to be our last target. And I just said that on film back there. You're not going to see that though, because I'm going to delete that clip of what we were digging after though. We thought was a coin. It turns out we got a little uh, plastic key tag, like a key ID tag. And then, uh, well, I knew what I was after after that, didn't I? I knew it was going to be a key and that's what it was. So we've got to find something better. And we've done just that. So listen to this guy. Sounds like the two shillings that we had stuck together before, doesn't it? Two mates in a hole. So hopefully, let's turn the around on him this way. Look, hopefully that's our florin. I'm not trying to be greedy here, but I'd certainly like to drive home with one in my pocket. So let's have a look and let's do it all together, shall we? So let's see if we've got a bit more uh, luck from Leon. I'd say so. It's going to be a coin, whatever it is. So look, I just want to see silver one more time in this sunlight. It's so cool. Especially big silver. Oh yeah, there you are. There's your spot. So look, get around behind him. Don't want to damage him. Because he's going to be a dirty big silver coin. Is it? No, it's a bit of scrap. There we go. Thanks, Leon. Thanks for your luck, buddy. A luck run out on the two shillings. Ah, oh dear. Look, that's not going to be our last target. We can't finish up on that. We can't finish on a key. Certainly can't finish on a, a rubbishy bit of a burnt off scrap. We need to find another coin. Let's do it. Well, we've got him. We've got our last target, and I mean it this time. I've said that about three times now. So let, uh, let's do it. Surely this has got to be a coin. Don't call me, Shirley. Uh, let's, uh, let's see if we've got a coin, though. Just for this last target, I always like to finish on a high, and uh, that be it with a coin. Something nice, ring or badge, pendant, brooch, something cool. Not a bit of scrap or a bit of rubbish. So let's have a look. And then, I mean it, we're going to get out of here. We're going to wrap it up, show you what we've got. We've got pennies, we've got silvers. Uh, I think that's about it, pennies and silvers. Uh, we've got uh, a lot of rubbish there too, as well. So we've got some cool coins though, and I'm really glad I come out today. And there's another one. So little half penny, <gasps> he's a Kanga. We finally got a Roo penny, finally got something later. Everything else at this site is early. I just love it. So 1963, a little Kanga Roo to finish us off. I said we'll get you over to the car, I'll do a wrap up and show you everything that we got out of here in what? The last hour, hour and a half. We'll see you there. Alrighty guys, so sadly that is a wrap up for today's video. We've done exceptionally well this afternoon and look, it did not matter what we got out and found. It was just about finding a little bit of peace of mind and a little bit of mental health happiness today for this afternoon before I return to the work week. As I said, had some pretty bad news and uh, look, it's just good, out, uh, good to get out and clear the head as, as many out there will know. So We've got some rubbish up the top, and look, I've enjoyed digging it all. It doesn't matter that it's rubbish, it's been fun. We also have some more contraband. We had the old tobacco pipe, a little stem collar, which we'll give you a look at in a minute. And not too long after that, though, we had the old pocket knife. So more contraband from the school. Uh, we had the little thumbtack and the little screw uh, coming off the oval there, which we were just walking across uh, to set up the conclusion. And we spotted those uh, just sitting out on the oval right there, where someone has been vacuuming and tipping out all the vacuum rubbish on the oval, a little thumbtack and a screw included. Uh, so look, we did do a couple of digs, which we'll get to in a minute, just walking over here, and we did have a bit more success. Uh, but let's start off and show you what we did for this afternoon. From the start, a three one cent coins, three two cent coins, a 10 cent coin, a $1 coin, and two 20 cent coins. Uh, so we are a $1.50 richer. Look out, uh, that'll pay for the fuel money. Maybe not. Uh, we've got a one penny, a full one penny, uh, the punched one penny, a 1914 that guy looks and a 1915 beside him. Uh, we also have another penny, 
Uh, we don't know what sort of date he's got. He's too hard to read. Another Com Penny and a little 63 Rue, a little half guy, which is awesome. And we all seen the 17 and the 1918, 1917, 1918, a shillings coming out. Now they are just awesome. As I said, two mates in a hole, and they were meant for me to find today. And we also had the 1862, a French coin with Napoleon on the front. Really cool. The little hair tie clip that, uh, look, it looks gold. I think it's gold. It's probably not gold. <laughs> we also had uh, the little stem collar, as I said, more contraband for the school. A little stem collar off an old tobacco pipe. So I dare say, look, this is someone's dad's tobacco pipe, and he's come here to watch his uh, son or daughter play or whatever. He's been having a bit of a, a smoke up the back there with his tobacco pipe, and he must have uh, dropped it, lost it, put it in his pocket, thought he, thought he put it in his pocket, and really he didn't. I don't know, but we've found it. So really cool. As we're walking over here too to set up, you, can, you know me, I can't help myself. I did not turn the detector off, and we dug a few more signals, a few bits uh, rubbish and also this one coin up the back here he's a 1900 seated britannia something i don't know what but he's got edward on the back so look out really really cool a 1900 something also a little 1921 a little thrippin so a little bit more luck from lee on there thanks mate and uh, also a lee kernigan great western hotel badge or tag I don't know what it is but he's got a little hole in him and we found the key ring and not too far away where is he this bit here so look out, Lee Kernigan, Great Western Hotel badge, another little thrippy into the count, plus another penny, plus the two big silvers, a French coin. Uh, look, we've had a uh, we've had a great day. So, and it wasn't, as I said from the start, it wasn't about what we found. And sometimes it's just getting out and enjoying uh, the outdoors or enjoying what you enjoy most. It could be fishing or camping or detecting. In my my scenario, uh, look, it could just be going out and uh, doing a bit of bushwalking or walking along the beach. Whatever it is, get out there, enjoy it, and get out there, enjoy it with your good friends. We'll see you next time.